and it is a reunion of sorts for Aaron Boone and Phil Nevin. The two spent some time together here in New York when Nevin was part of the Yankees coaching staff, but their ties, well, they run much deeper than that. And that brings us to today's interview and quote of the day presented by Toyota. So friends together again, sharing a 99 burger. This is great stuff, guys. It's a great burger. It's in the conversation with the great ones, right? In and out, California, yeah. our home stock, our home Shake Shack, this is 99 burgers, mm -hmm. legit. Double Wagyu smash patty, I was told. Pretty cool. Melts in your mouth. Now, a lot of people don't know this about the two of you. You guys have been friends since essentially you were teenagers, right? So, Phil's two years older than me, as you can tell. <laughs> and uh, I remember seeing him. He used to, when he, I, we met when I was probably in the sixth grade, so he would have been in the eighth grade. So I remember him, like seeing him, and we were, we were playing like over the line at El Dorado High School on the side field. And that's where I first met him. And then, you know, he ends up, he's two years behind Brett my brother went to high school with him so they became you know friends and and then i was always kind of just chasing him and looking up to him and here we are this many years later still still buddies now back in the day was he the annoying little brother because you were hanging out with brett no no not at all see that's that, that is how we met because brett and i were high school teammates mm -hmm. and he remembers the overline stuff. I remember going to the Boone house because I got to go to Bob's, you know, his dad's house. He was the catcher for the Angels. And um, so that was like the big thrill. But we just kind of all became friends. It, uh, our first, I mean, obviously I remember all those days. Our first time that we really hung out, I think, was driving to spring. We played in a couple of golf events. And then yeah. he was in Arizona. I was in California. So we went there. I went there, drove to Arizona, and then picked him up. And we drove from Phoenix to... Florida. Well, you were in Plant City. I was in Lakeland. So we spent three days, four days. Actually, we strung it out a couple more days. <laughs> Where'd yeah. you guys stop, and why did you stop so much? We, I can I can only remember one place we stopped because we were on our way, and we were going to stop in New Orleans. This is before you could make online reservations and right. stuff. And we're pulling into New Orleans, and it's late at night, yeah. and there's traffic. We can't we can't figure out what's going on. And we rolled down the window and talked to someone. Hey, what? It's all the traffic. It's the first night of Mardi Gras. Somebody said, we're like, oh, we're staying here tonight. How much do you check in with each other back in your playing days? When he was with the Reds, just little things like pop into your head, right? So I had stayed at their house. Bob, and he, Bob was the manager, and he was playing for the Reds. And the night before, we had won the game, and Bob had called a bases-loaded squeeze <laughs> bunt. And when I got downstairs, they were still arguing about it. Like he was saying, how the heck, she, <laughs> Dad, how can you call a squeeze with the bases loaded? It's the dumbest play ever. And Bob was trying to explain why it's a great play. And <laughs> I'm like, well, I thought it was a dumb play too, but it helped us out. <laughs> and then obviously you spent some time together with the Yankees. I mean, as you were playing, you're probably not necessarily thinking about the future, but did you think there would be a day where you guys would be managing against each other? Um, no, actually. I. When he called me about joining him on the staff, I kind of got to the point where it, it was kind of passing its time, if you will. And I, I wasn't sure. And, and when he called, it was like, I mean, come for the, to the Yankees and coach for you? Yeah, of course. I and mean, it, was, it was a great four years. It really was. Was yeah. it tough keeping him in line? Uh, no. <laughs> no. It was, it, was, it was great. You know, I think it, it forged our friendship even more. You know, I would say there's probably no one that I call or text more during the year. I mean, how many days a year do we probably text or call? Like, seriously, like yeah. a lot. Those four years of us spending together, obviously on a staff, um, I think just, you know, brought our friendship probably to another level. What has it been like for each of you to watch each other grow in the sport of baseball from getting drafted to first hit, first home run, and then eventually to where you guys are now? It's been it's been great. Like you, you'd love to see, you know, for me, family members, but friends that, you know, you kind of grew up with and chasing the dream with and, you know, to see him be like the Golden Spikes winner, number one pick, you know, father of the Oakley sunglasses, you know, he was like the first of that. And to see him take his lumps early in his career, like in the Meyer Leagues, like first pick, it wasn't easy for him. And I mean, went back to be a catcher, you know, a few years into his minor league career. 
and then eventually got an opportunity um, and took full advantage of it in San, San Diego and turned out to have an awesome major league career. And then to see him jump right back into the game like he did was cool. You know, like to see one of your buddies like, man, he like went and paid his dues in independent league, co managing an independent league, coaching in the minor leagues. Like it was cool to see that path. And um, and now I couldn't be more happy for him. It's similar for me because I'm seeing it now with my boys. You know, he grew up in the shadow of his dad and his older brother who was kind of burst on the scene right away when he was a player. You always, you're always rooting for that guy, probably a little more, like, because it's just hard to have that path and create it on your own when people are ahead of you like that. I mean, you understand it more because you were around the game, but I think he just, he was somebody that I always, you know, considered kind of a little brother. It, it emerged more from, it's weird because Brett was like the big brother I always looked up to. Aaron was like the little brother I want to take care of. And then it, it's almost like they reverse roles. Like, <laughs> uh, to where, I mean, I certainly learned a lot from him uh, the four years I was here. Uh, certain, I've told him many times I wouldn't be where I'm at if uh, it wasn't for him. So when he got the job here, I was, the, one of the first things he asked when he came, away, would it, is it a problem? Like, is you know, you've been wanting to be a manager for you. I've been through many interviews and stuff like that. And I mean, the first thing I said was absolutely not. I can't wait to come help you. And and I ended up learning probably more from him than I had from people that I had worked for bef before. What impressed me the most about Aaron, the grasp he had of everybody involved in the room with player development and understanding what that was like. I mean, he just caught it that quick and it was really impressive but right away he knew what he was doing it was pretty awesome to watch it was fun to be a part of it was a great four-year run for us it's just a bunch of guys i root for and obviously he's at the top of it